Hello everyone. In chapter 6, we will learn about hypothesis testing. I am sure you have been in a situation where somebody claimed something and you are in doubt and in suspicion of his or her claim. Is it true or not? Should you accept it or reject it? So in this chapter, we will carry out hypothesis tests to verify a claim or reject it. For example, a company may manufacture amplifiers and they claim the average gain of their amplifier mu is larger than 10. So as an engineer, you have to verify this claim. Is it true or not before you buy it? So what you're going to do is you're going to take a sample of size n or larger than 30 amplifiers and you test them. So you have x1 amplifier, x2, and you are measuring the gain all the way to x30. And you find the sample mean or the average gain of these amplifiers in this sample equal 12.68. So now the question is, is the sample mean 12.68 came because their claim is true that the average amplification of their amplifier larger than 10? Or is it by chance due to variation in these samples? So if I take another sample, I may get X bar less than 10 or equal 10. So how do we verify that this sample mean came because their claim is true? So from the central limit theorem, X bar will have a normal distribution. So this is the normal distribution. And their claim is their mean is larger than 10. The sample mean X bar came 12.68. So you calculate this area, which is, we call it the p-value. And if this area came very small, like 4%, that means the probability of a sample mean has 12.68 from a population that has mean 10 is very slim, very small. So the only conclusion is the mean probably is more than 10. That's why we got the sample mean 12.68. The mean of the population, maybe it's 11. So their claim, probably true. So I cannot reject their claim. So how do we set the hypothesis and test it? This will be the topic of this chapter. So in this chapter and in several videos, we will cover large sample tests for a population mean, just like the one I just talked about. And then we will conduct a hypothesis test for a population proportion. Now a company may claim the proportion of their product success is 95%. So we want to make sure, is that true? Then small sample tests for a population mean. Now what happened if I can not take a large sample? So N is maybe 10. So how do I carry out the test? Then large sample test for a difference between two means. So now maybe I have two companies or two population, and I want to see the difference between mu1 and mu2. And see, maybe the mean of this product is better than the mean of this product by 10 or 20. So I want to test that hypothesis. Same thing then, test of difference between two proportion. Now, I'm talking about the proportion of success that their product will deliver. Then test with paired data. Now I have population, but I have to take a sample from here and a sample from here and find the difference, then take another sample and another sample here and exert the same testing on them and find the difference and compare the products of this population and this population. And then test with categorical data. Now maybe the manufacturer is producing pipes and they are measuring the radius of these pipes, but they have maybe four machines. Machines one, machine two, machine three that produce this pipe, machine four. And now the category is the radius. Is it too large? Is it exactly, or is it too small? And I wanna compare the performance of these four machines to decide which machine is working or which machine needs maintenance. 
And finally, test for variance of a normal population. Now I have a population here and I am after the variance. Is the variance very small or large? Maybe a company making resistors. And they said our resistor is 100 ohm and the variance of the variation is 0.1%, which is very good. So now I want to verify, is their claim true or false? So these are going to be in several videos, maybe five or six videos, short videos. The video of this one will cover the large sample test for a population mean. So in section 6.1, large sample test for a population mean, how do you set the null hypothesis is very important and the alternative hypothesis. You want to set the null hypothesis so you either reject it or accept it. So it's very critical how do we set the null hypothesis. Usually, the null hypothesis says that the effect indicated by the sample is due only to random variation between the sample and the population. So when you take this population, you take these samples, and they claim here mu is larger than 10, the null hypothesis says yes, x bar is 12.68, due to randomness. So you can say in the null hypothesis, H0 mu is equal 10 or less. And the alternative hypothesis says that the effect indicated by the sample is real, in that it accurately represents the whole population. Now the alternative hypothesis says, oh, the sample mean is 12.68 because mu is larger than 10, as the company claims. So let's demonstrate this by taking this example. So this example, a certain type of automobile engine emits a mean of 100 milligram of oxide nitrogen per second at 100 horsepower. A modification to the engine design has been proposed that may reduce oxide of nitrogen emission. The new design will be put into production if it can be demonstrated that it mean emission rate is less than 100 milligram. So this manufacturer manufactured this engine and he's claiming that the emission of oxide of nitrogen is less than 100 milligram per second. So how are we going to test it? We're going to take a sample and we take a sample. We ask him to manufacture 50 modified engine to test. So N equal 50. And then we calculated the sample mean and we found it to be 92 milligram per second. And the sample standard deviation S equal 21 milligram per second. So we take this sample, we find the mean, we find the standard deviation. Now the manufacturer claimed that oxide of nitrogen emission is less than 100. That's what he claimed. He's saying mu is less than 100. Usually the null hypothesis is to oppose that claim. So I'm going to set my null hypothesis H0. I'm always in doubt. Mu actually equal or larger than 100. It will not be any difference than the engine that we have. And your new design, not necessarily better. And the alternative hypothesis, H1, is mu less than 100. So this is 100. Here it shows 92. Now the question is, is this 92 for this sample by a coincidence, by a chance? Maybe if I take another sample, it will come close to 100 and maybe 105. Or is this 92 really low because the new engine design is better? So let me calculate. What is the probability that X bar will be 92 or less? That means I calculate this p-value, that probability. And the same thing we did earlier chapter to calculate this probability. We have to convert this normal distribution using the z-score to find the standard normal distribution. So the z equal x minus mu divided by sigma of x bar. So x bar we found it to be 92 minus mu, that is 100, that is the current emission. Divided by sigma x which is 21, that is the standard deviation of the sample divided by square root of n to find standard deviation of x bar, 50. And if we calculate this, it came minus 2.69. Then if I use the table, the standard normal distribution table, this is 0, to find what is minus 2.69. From the table, 
these will come let's go back to the table minus 2.6 is here and the 9 is here so that's 2.69 if I go down here and down here this probability is 0 0.0036 let's go back to our problem so that p-value 0.0036 that's this area the probability that the emission came 92 by chance is less than 0.36 percent that's a small probability to come by chance so there is a strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis that means the emission came low 92 not by a chance or variation in the sample no because of the design is better than the old design and it gave us a smaller emission so there is a strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis and to accept the alternative hypothesis which is what the company claim and that's basically the hypothesis test for the mean if we can take a large sample 30 or more and we can go through any kind of test by using the following steps these are the steps to perform a hypothesis test for a mean of a large sample first you listen to the claim and then you decide what is the null hypothesis what is the alternative hypothesis and that is a real challenge you want to choose them so you can reach a conclusion you can reject something and accept something you don't want to choose them then you take the sample and you run the test and then the test is not conclusive i cannot reject it i cannot accept it then that's useless so be careful how do you use your null hypothesis rule of thumb is the null hypothesis usually oppose the claim that means if the claim mu is less than 100 and you carry the test and x bar came here then your null hypothesis should be opposed the claim that mu is 100 or more the next step you assume that the null hypothesis to be true that means your doubt is true and put your doubt into the test by calculating a test statistic in this case we calculated the z score to assess the strength of the evidence against H0. How am I gonna assess the strength of evidence against H0? After I find the Z score here, I calculate the P value. So that's step four. Compute the P value of the test statistic. The P value is the probability assuming H0 to be true. That mean is 100 or larger that the test statistic would have a value whose disagreement with H0 is as great as or greater than what was actually absorbed. That means I calculated the p-value, in my case is 92, and even that it could be more against the 100, means 92 or less, that's the p-value, which is more strong evidence against the null hypothesis that mu is 100 or more. The p-value is also called absorbed significance level. In this case, I will say I reject the null hypothesis at 0.36%. Just to show how much your evidence disagree with the null hypothesis. Rule of thumb is 5%. If it's less than 5%, you can reject the null hypothesis. But it's always good to specify what's the percentage to see how strong is the evidence against the null hypothesis. After that, state a conclusion about the strength of the evidence against the null hypothesis. And what's your conclusion? I reject the null hypothesis at 5% level or 2% level. Let's take another example. The article where in boundary lubrication, published in 2002, discuss several experiments involving various lubricants. In one experiment, 45 steel balls lubricated with purified paraffin were subjected to a 40 kilogram load at 600 rotation per minute for 60 minutes. 
the average wear measured by the reduction in diameter was 673 micrometer so they have a population they take a sample of n45 steel balls and the average is 673.2 micrometer and the standard deviation 14.9 micrometer assume that the specification for a lubricant is that the mean will be less than 675 so that is mu is less or equal 675 micrometer just to summarize the specification for a lubricant is that the mean will to be less than 675 so that's what we need so we took a sample x bar came actually less than 675 and standard deviation 14.9 now the question is is this x bar by a chance so this is what they want mu to be less than 675 we took a sample and x bar came here 673.2 so now is this reduction in the diameter due to the purified paraffin or is it could be by chance because of the sample we took here if we take another sample maybe it will come 676 so now we have to state the null hypothesis null hypothesis is always go against the claim or against the evidence the evidence is 675 no i will say no mu actually the average of reduction diameter is just equal 675 or more and this 673 is just by a chance and the alternative hypothesis would be the opposite actually mu is less than 675 so now i have to test this evidence how strong is this evidence is 673 less than 675 by chance or is it because the verified paraffin is a better lubricant so now i have to calculate the statistic which is the z-score first and then the p-value which is this area so the statistic z is x bar minus mu over sigma x bar so that is 673.2 minus mu is 675 that's the specification what they want divided by the standard deviation of the sample 14.9 divided by n 45 and if you calculate that z score you will get minus 0.81 and if i find the p value using the standard normal distribution for z minus 0.81 this area p value will be 0.209 that means there is a chance that i get that and that chance is 20 0.9 percent that's a high chance it can be rare to get a sample of this 673 so maybe the purified lubricant paraffin is not a good lubricant and that reduction just by a chance if i take another sample maybe it will come 675 so there is no strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis and the conclusion maybe i'm not gonna use this purified paraffin it would do no different than other lubricant I have been using. Okay, let's take this example. And this is like two-sided or two-tailed test. Let's see how different it is than previous examples. A maintenance company told you that your scale needs calibration and it will cost you money. How do you decide if your scale needs calibration or not? So one way to do it is weighting a 1000 gram test weight 60 times so i have my scale i have a standard rock maybe that weight exactly 1000 gram i take 60 measurements so that's my sample n equals 60 and this is measurement one measurement two measurement 60 and the mean of the 60 measurement is a thousand point six gram x bar equal thousand point six gram and the standard deviation of the sample s is two gram now the question is is my scale is calibrated and maybe i don't need calibration and spend money 
it came 1,000.6. Maybe if I take another measurement, it will come x bar 1,000. So the first thing is to set the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. And in this case, it's not like mu equal a thousand or more or mu equal a thousand or less. No, I need the scale to give me exact measurement. It has to give me a thousand gram for that standard rock. So my null hypothesis will be, I don't need calibration. My scale is fine. So mu is a thousand. That's my null hypothesis. The company say, no, your scale needs calibration to charge me, and I doubt it. So the alternative hypothesis, H1, will be mu does not equal 1,000. So in this case, we call it a two-sided or two-tailed test. If I plot it here, mu is 1,000. That's what it should be. If x bar, the sample mean, came less here in this region or more, that's no good. So I took a sample, I made a measurement, and it came 1,000.6. So now the question, is that by a chance, this variation, or is my scale not calibrated? I need to calibrate it. If the standard deviation is something like this, and the 1,000 here, and the 1,000.6 here, then that area is going to be small, and maybe this is way far from here, and maybe I need calibration. But if it's like close to here, now I don't need calibration. How do we make a decision? We calculate the p-value that x bar is 1,000.6 or more. And even here, like 1,000 minus 0.6, like 999.4 or less. So two sides now will contribute to the p-value. More than the mean 1,000 or less by that much, 0.6. So I have to calculate the z-score the statistic test, then I have to calculate the p-value, which one now two-sided will contribute to it. So let's calculate the z-score, x-bar, which is 1,000.6, minus mu, which is 1,000, divided by sigma x-bar, which is s, the 2 gram, divided by square root of n, 60. If I calculate this, I get 2.32. So if I plot here, the standard normal distribution, this is the mean zero, this is the statistic test, and I got 2.32 here, and minus 2.3, two-sided now. Whenever the null hypothesis is equal, you have to do the two-sided test, minus 2.32. So I have to look into the standard normal table to find this p-value and this p-value. This will be the same as this one. So if we go to the table, to look for z equal minus 2.32, minus 2.32, that's 2.3, and this 2.32, and here it's 0.0102. So back to our problem, the p-value here, 0.0102, and the same thing here, 0.0102. So our p-value will be 0.0102 plus 0.0102. This equal 0.0204. So the p-value came 2.04%. So there is a strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis. P-value less than 5%. So there is a strong evidence that the sample came 1,000.6, not by chance, but because my scale is not calibrated and it needs calibration. So we have this scenario. We did an example for one sided test and another example for two tail test. When the null hypothesis specify a single value for mu, then both tail contribute to the p-value and the test is said to be two-sided or two-tail. When the null hypothesis specify only that mu is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to a value, then only one tail contribute to the p-value. And the test is called a one-side or one-tail test. So the summary of the hypothesis for the mean is in this slide. Usually we have a company that produces products, and this is the population. And the company may claim the mean of their product, either gain or amplification or strength, is either above mu naught 
or below mu naught or equal mu naught depend on the application so we have a population we don't know what is mu we may not even know the standard deviation of the population and now we want to set a null hypothesis to test that their mu here is either larger than mu naught or smaller or equal so the first step is we take a sample of size n equal or larger than 30. So we're going to have here x1, x2, and all the way to xn, measurement of the product. Then we calculate the sample mean, x bar, and the standard deviation of the sample mean, s. We don't know what is sigma of the population. So after we do this, now the next step, which hypothesis do I choose? That will depend on the company's claim. So for example, if x bar here came larger than mu naught, so probably the company is claiming that mu of their product equal mu naught or larger. So the null hypothesis based on the sample mean, I will assume that the mean of the population is equal or less than mu naught, and that would be the null hypothesis. So I will go against the evidence and then calculate the p-value. And the p-value is basically saying, what is the probability that the sample mean x bar will be larger than mu naught if the sample mean here came from a population with mean equal or less than mu naught. If that p-value came very, very small, like 0 0.04 or basically less than 5%, then there is a strong evidence or statistically significant evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Basically saying that the mean of the population has to be larger than mu naught, which means we accept the alternative hypothesis. Okay, let's clean up to see second possibility for null hypothesis. Now, the second possibility, the company may claim that the mean of the population, mu, is less than mu naught. And x bar came to be, in this case, less than mu naught. So the null hypothesis in this case will be against their claim or against the evidence. So I will claim the mean is larger than mu naught. Then I will calculate the p-value, which is the area of fear. Again, if the p-value came 5% or less, then there is a strong evidence that this sample mean did really come from a population with mean equal or less than mu naught. So there is a strong evidence or, or statistically significant evidence to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. Let's clean up. Now, the third possibility, the company claim or the application require that the population mean equal mu naught. In this case, the sample mean may come less than mu naught or larger than mu naught or equal mu naught. So I will go against the evidence. Here, the evidence x bar less than mu naught. And in this case, x bar larger than mu naught. So it doesn't matter which one. If it's here, then I will calculate this area and this area. If it was here, then I again calculate this area and this area for p-value. So for this possibility, then my null hypothesis will be mu equal mu naught. Going against the evidence here that x bar is not equal mu naught. So after I calculate x bar, then I will calculate the p-value here and here. So the p-value will be consisting of, of these two area. And if the p-value came 5% or less, then there is strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis. That means there is no possibility that a sample mean of this value did come from a population with mean mu equal mu naught. So the alternative hypothesis, the population mean does not equal mu naught. So it is important how to set your null hypothesis so the p-value will help you make a decision, either to reject the claim or accept it. Let us demonstrate this by the next example. In this example, specification for a water pipe call for a mean breaking strength mu of more than 2,000. So they said mu has to be more than 2,000 bound per linear foot. 
engineer will perform a hypothesis test to decide whether or not to use a certain kind of pipe. They will select a random sample of one feet sections of pipe, measure their breaking strength, and perform a hypothesis test. The pipe will not be used unless the engineers can conclude that mu is larger than 2000. So they take a sample here, let's say n is larger than 30, and they calculate the mean breaking strength. Assume they tested the null hypothesis mu is less than 2000 versus the alternative hypothesis mu is more than 2000. And the sample mean, let's assume this is the mean 2000 they want, and let's assume the sample mean x bar came here and they calculate the p-value and it came 0 0.03, like 3%. Now there is a strong evidence, this is probably 2020 x bar. Now there is a strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis and to accept the alternative hypothesis and they will be using the pipe because it showed that they are more than 2000 and it was not by chance. There is a strong evidence that they are more than 2000 because of the material they used in manufacturing these pipes. Now, if H0 is not rejected, then they cannot use the pipe. Now, let's assume you chose the null hypothesis to be H0 mu is larger than 2000. So, opposite of this. Then the alternative hypothesis H1 mu is less than 2000 and you have your sample here and mu is 2000 and your sample x bar came here and again it's 2020 and you calculated the p-value and it came 0 0.03 like three percent now i cannot reject the null hypothesis because the sample mean is larger than mu naught which agree with the null hypothesis but at the same time i cannot accept it so I cannot make a decision to use the pipe or not. So that is a poor choice of the null hypothesis. So choose the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis so that the p-value will give you strong evidence against the null hypothesis. Otherwise, if you don't choose your null hypothesis properly, you can carry out the test and you end up not being able to make a decision regardless of what the sample of the population tell you. Next section is 6.3, which is tests for a population proportion. Thank you for watching.